Welcome to Health for You. We'll discuss how to get rid of the garbage that is residing inside your body in this video. If you take care of your inside body, you'll instantly lose weight, have clearer skin, more energy, and sharper thinking. Before continuing, let's talk about what happens to food once it leaves your plate and enters your body. You may already be aware that food first travels to your stomach, where it is broken down, then to your intestines, where it is eventually eliminated as waste. But do you believe that each meal travels through this cycle at the same rate? Obviously not. Fruits digest and pass through the body in around 3 hours. Stomach, small intestine, and large intestine for 1 hour each. Vegetables require a little more time, roughly 6 hours. What about the grains? Which essentially consists of wheat, rice, lentils, and beans. Any ideas? 18 hours are needed for digestion and elimination. Obviously, these values are estimations, but they still give you a good picture. Basically, the harder it is for your body to digest a chemical, the less water there is in it. Now, grains take 18 hours to travel through your system, and the majority of us consume them 3 to 4 times daily. This means that even before the last meal was digested, we added additional food, and the last meal was naturally left undigested. It doesn't leave our body through stools, instead, it rots, ferments, and decays inside our intestines where it gives rise to mold, viruses, and fungi. Have you heard the unsettling tales about how tapeworms were discovered in people's intestines? Of course, those individuals didn't consume tapeworms, so how did they get there? You may have heard the adage, you are what you eat, through the rotting, undigested food that is sitting in the intestines. True, but perhaps more crucially, you are what you ate. You might still be carrying around the burger you consumed a year ago. Everything that is not derived directly from nature, such as biscuits, fast food, sugar, and the majority of other things, is particularly challenging to digest and expel. It develops a thick coating on the inside of our intestines and adheres to them. Our intestines' walls are covered in many microscopic projections that resemble fingers. Imagine that if there is decaying, dead waste adhering to the intestines that is what the villi absorb and convey to every cell of the body. These villi absorb it and transmit it to the bloodstream. We naturally refer to this trash, which surrounds our organs and prevents them from working, as sickness. We refer to it as eczema, psoriasis, or acne if it adheres to the layers of our skin. We refer to it as a stone if it develops as a kidney or gallbladder stone. How about too much weight? You must reduce your waistline circumference first. High blood pressure is referred to when waist makes the blood heavier and causes the heart to pump it more forcefully. PC Odway refer to it as an ovarian cyst if it accumulates there, which can lead to issues including PCOD and menstruation abnormalities. Constipation is the other of all disorders since if something sticks to our intestines, we refer to it as such. We refer to it as asthma if this garbage blocks the airways and makes breathing challenging. We refer to it as cholesterol if it causes plaque within the walls of arteries. This waste may have become a minor issue today. But if we don't clean it up, the same waste will develop into something far more dangerous like a tumor or a cancer cell tomorrow. The removal of this waste and these toxins automatically cures the illness. In an internally clean body, no sickness can survive. Mother Nature gave us this human body as a priceless gift. We will soon give it back to her, but while we have it, it is our responsibility to keep it tidy, vibrant with life, and healthy, just as she intended. Consider a gasoline-powered vehicle. Obviously, if you put diesel in a car that was designed for petrol, it won't operate. To make it function, you must first take out the diesel and then add the gasoline. The same is true of us, we unintentionally gave our bodies what they weren't designed for. No wonder, it isn't functioning properly. So, the first step is to get rid of undesirable items, such as waste, and the second is to eat the proper foods. Step 1 will be covered in this video. Next, we'll talk about step 2. I'll tell you precisely what you need to do, so make sure you stick around to the finish. You should begin intermittent fasting as your first action. Now, I beg you not to be afraid of this, I assure you that it is not difficult. See, the doctor who heals you is inside your body, not in a pill, a vaccine, or a drug. The healing force that will eliminate toxins, treat disease, and help you lose weight is present inside each person's body. And you allow this healing capacity to function by observing intermittent fasting, time-restricted eating. There is evidence to support this. A plaster is applied to your arm when you break a bone to keep it in place and allow it to heal. 
The bone automatically attaches itself after a few days. It's not like the plaster contains any medication. What then connects that shattered bone? You have the ability to heal. This ability of healing is a vast, magnificent power. Why can't it break the stones, tumors, and cysts in your body if it can join a broken bone? Cysts or tumors on your body? Can't it get those toxins out? Can it treat arthritis, diabetes, high blood pressure, or diabetes? Of course, it can, since the healing force is unaware of the name of your ailment. These concepts are defined by physicians. No matter where it is or how long it has been there, everything is fixed once the healing power kicks in. Let's now comprehend how our healing capacity functions. Only one thing can be accomplished at a time either digestion or recovery. Digestion or recovery. We never allow our healing ability to perform its job. We keep getting in the way of it. We never stop eating. We continue to upset our recovery, healing. By constantly eating. This healing capacity stops what it was doing as soon as we consume calories. Digestion and recovery, healing do not occur at the same time. Unfortunately, we eat all the time. Before our breakfast could be digested, we added a lunchtime meal. Therefore, the stomach works non-stop for seven days in a row without rest. You must occasionally give digestion a rest if you want its healing power to act. We advise giving your stomach a 16-hour respite each night. For instance, if dinner time is at 8 p.m., avoid eating anything until midday the next day. You eat your first substantial meal of the day at noon. Essentially, you're eating inside an 8-hour window while fasting for 16 hours each day. 16-hour fasting or intermittent fasting is what it's known as 16 eights. Before midday, you can consume water, tea, or coffee, but anything else is strictly prohibited. Given that you spend the majority of your time sleeping rather than eating, this is actually much simpler than you may expect. Although at first, it may seem strange to you, fasting is essentially how Mother Nature created our bodies. Our hunter-gatherer forefathers didn't have year-round access to food, stores, or refrigerators. Our body developed the ability to fast because there were instances when we were unable to find food. In fact, intermittent fasting is more natural than consistently eating four times daily. How long you want to fast is entirely up to you. Some people find it challenging to wait until 12 p.m. to eat, but they find it simple to take their final meal at 6 p.m. In this situation, you might observe a fast every day from 6 p.m. to 10 a.m. If you work and eat dinner at 9 p.m., you should fast until at least 1 p.m. the following day. Your body has the opportunity to repair a little bit each day by observing daily 16-hour fasts. If 16 seems too much at first, start with 14 and build. Please take time to like and subscribe. It's not hard to do this. Consider having dinner at 8 p.m. and your first substantial meal the next day at 12 p.m. Your dinner would likely be digested in 6 hours if it were nutritious. Therefore, your digestive hours are from 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. As soon as the healing power has finished digesting, healing begins. Thus, your healing period will last for the following 10 hours. This is when it regenerates skin tissue, lightens previous scars, and replaces aging, damaged, or dead skin cells. It dissolves kidney and gallbladder stones. Reduces the cell's excess fat. It breaks fibroids and cysts and restores and cleans your intestines. Clears the plaque in your arteries and removes the mucus that is obstructing your airways. Your body expels poisons through stool, urine, sweat, or breath when your healing power has reached the depths of each organ and removed them. Now, it's also crucial that you eat a light dinner. We advise having soup or salad. Eating as many veggies as you can is vital. Don't overeat as well. A good item cannot be had in excess. Do not believe the statement, if I eat only nutritious food. I can eat as much as I want. Before leaving the dinner table, always leave a little room in your stomach. The number of healing hours you devote to your body determines how quickly you recover from a condition. If you fast for 16 hours every night, you will have provided 112 healing hours in one week and nearly 450 hours in one month. 1,500 hours in three months. Additionally, all chronic disorders, including diabetes, high cholesterol, and PCOD, are curable in 1500 HH. It would probably take you much less time if you're youthful or if your condition isn't so old. Just make sure you adhere to the diet I have recommended for you. What we are doing is using fasting and diet to completely reverse chronic disease and all of its associated problems. 
It differs greatly from simply cutting calories. Getting rid of harmful fat during a fast is six times more effective. I have read extensive, age-old Indian sciences like Ayurveda, naturopathy, and yoga, and they all concur on this fundamental idea. You're so much more productive when you're not thinking about meals all the time. Because you aren't always thinking about eating, you accomplish more throughout the day. Alright, let's continue. Share this video with your friends and family so that everyone has access to this invaluable information about how mother nature and can heal themselves naturally. If you want to never miss an update on our upcoming video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click the bell symbol. Number 3 is an enema. You may assume you're not clogged since you use the restroom every day, but that doesn't imply you are. Consider that you are 30 years old. Have you ever seen a house's plumbing system that is 30 years old? Water and sewage are flowing through them, yes, but after 30 years, there has accumulated so much waste that it is difficult for anything to pass through. Similarly, each time you consume food that isn't naturally occurring, more and more of this waste becomes trapped inside of you. You need something that will actually dissolve this tough, crusty material. Similar to the dark, hard substance that accumulates at the bottom of your pots and pans. How do you remove it? It is submerged in water. Given enough time, water dissolves practically anything and is a universal solvent. Okay, so tell me how to get water in my intestines. By way of an enema. Purchase an enema kit. Some pharmacies carry these items, however, internet shopping is more convenient and cost-effective. I will not go too much into the mechanics of how to take an enema in this video for the sake of time. There is much information available about this. What I will say is this. The encrusted grime in your system will begin to be displaced by pure water. You'll be shocked to see how full of waste your intestines were when you feel the urge to use the restroom. This is entirely secure and organic. It is not natural for us to transport all of that rubbish in our bodies. And then you wonder why you don't feel well and are sick. Most people will say, I will do whatever you are recommending, but not enema. But believe me, after doing it only once, and seeing what you have been hauling around it will not be your last time and hopefully become a weekly part of your cleansing regimen. Thus, routine. Why do we never say things like, yuck, I don't want to brush my teeth because they're dirty? About our body's internal organs? The best time to have an enema is right after using the restroom in the morning, on an empty stomach. If morning is not an option, you can take it at any other time of the day as long as you leave at least 2-3 to three hours between eating and the enema. Take an enema once every day for 3 weeks if you are just beginning to live this way of life. Take it only once a week or as needed after the first 3 weeks. You won't become dependent on it for motions, so don't worry. Do it even more regularly, ideally 2 or 3 times daily. If you have a cold, cough, fever, stomach discomfort, or other illness. So I hope you are now fully aware of how to properly cleanse the body internally. I advise you to combine the detoxification methods to be the most effective. Please spread the word about this video to your friends and family so they can all stop using medications and get back to mother nature. Please like and subscribe. Stay healthy.